Come on, say it with me. Preach. Hey. Elder Go. Come on, say it with me. Preach. Hey. Elder Go. Hey. I present the sermon and introduce the others, our assistant pastor, Elder Joy Go. with his right hand and the other with his left. 
And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were with, that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. All right. Now, uh, this is a time where uh, the Israelites, uh, they lived in a vicious cycle for many, many years. Now, the Israelites, they disobeyed. Israel then became oppressed. Israel cries out to God. God raises up a deliverer. Israel is delivered. Israel is at peace. And then it starts all over again. Israel disobeys God yet again. Now, um, the period of Judges shows the tribes of Israel following a pattern consisting of disobedience, oppression, crying out to God, and deliverance. Now, each time Israel was to be delivered, God raised up a judge to deliver them from captivity. The Bible over in Judges uh, 13, uh, 3 through 5 says, 13, 3 through 5 says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink. Eat not any un eat not any unclean thing. For lo, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin, and he shall begin, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Now see, that word begin jumped right off the page, see? Because that tells us that this guy was prophesying what was happening before the, before Samson was even born. That tells me that God knows our beginning and our end. Yes, he does. Amen. That's significant. Yes. That is a very significant passage of scriptures. This is an angel talking to this woman, just like the angel came to Mary and told her that she was going to have a special child. Sarah laughed when uh, God told her and Abraham that they were going to have a child. She laughed at the notion, see? But God knows. God is uh, all-powerful. He's all-everything. He's on the all. Every, everything God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, he is. Samson was the last of the judges. He judged, uh, he ruled for 20 years out of the 40 years that they were in captivity mm-hmm. by the Philistines. Mm-hmm. Now, Samson had a calling on his life. God granted Samson great strength, but there were conditions to him having that great strength. Samson was supposed to consecrate himself to God to make a vow to be a Nazarite. A Nazarite was a holy person, right? And you can make a vow to be a Nazarite for a period of time and say, Lord, I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not going to cut my hair or I'm not going to eat anything unclean or drink no strong wine or uh, no, no wine or strong drink for six months. I'm, I'm going to be a holy person. But God was calling for Samson to be a holy person for his entire life. Yes. And he didn't like that calling. He didn't want to he didn't want to uh, to serve God in that way. He was a sinner. Samson was a womanizer. He was vindictive. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now see, the mark or uh, the sign or mark of the agreement that Sam Samson was to have with God was is Samson's long hair. Yes. Okay? Like I said, Samson didn't accept his calling. One day, Samson killed a lion with his bare hands. The Bible says, and the Bible says, where are you? 16, 4 through 6. At uh, Judges 16, 4, 4 through 6. 16 and 6. Father God in the name of Jesus. 14. 16 and 4. Okay, 14 and 6. Here it is. The Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. Samson rent means that he tore the lion with his bare hands as he would like a small animal that they were going to sacrifice or whatever. A kid, a goat, or whatever. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Now, the Bible don't say that Samson's hair stood up on his head like the promoter box of promoter Don King. Uh-oh. <laughs> The Bible don't say that the, that his hair stood upon his back like a cat that's getting ready to attack. The Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. That just wasn't, that wasn't no regular anointing. I mean, he came, uh, and the spirit came upon him mightily. And you're going to find out that each time he did something powerful using his strength, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. Now, um, Samson ended up marrying a Philistine woman against the advice of God and his parents. It wasn't supposed to be marrying out of the Israelite. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be marrying uh, all these other ites, all these uh, people that were not of them Israelites. So um, they had a wedding, and uh, this wedding lasted for like seven days, right? Now, the Bible doesn't say that Samson took a drink or whatever, but with all his womanizing and things that he was doing, all the sins, you know, that he was committing, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I don't have no heaven or no hell to put him in, but people, some of my reading suggest that he just may have. Now, during this week-long wedding and doing any kind of feast that they would have back in those days, they didn't have no dominoes. They wasn't playing bed whist. They didn't have no board games. They entertained themselves with riddles. Okay? So, they, like I said, this, this, uh, this wedding lasted for seven days. And uh, Samson gave 30 men guest, a widow. <laughs> Lo and behold, the widow was uh, regarding the lion that he just killed or whatever. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, his wife, I don't know what it was with him and the woman that he hooked up with. They weren't loyal at all. They just were not loyal. So his wife told him in the, 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 the solution to the riddle. And when they uh, they told Samson the riddle on the seventh day, he got very upset. Well, whatever. <laughs> he got very upset. He was uh, so upset that he went down and he slew 30 Philistines, took their garments. That was the bet for, you know, agreement. If you, if, you, if, you, if you figure out the riddle, then I'll go get you 30 garments and uh, sheets or 30 changes or whatever. Yeah. But if you can't figure it out, then you have to give me 30. Samson was upset. He went and slew 30 men and then brought their garments back and gave it to the, uh, the 30 men. Then he left. He left and went to his parents' house. He was so upset with his wife that her father gave her to another man. Look out. 
Like I said, Samson was a vindictive person, so he uh, went and captured 300 foxes and tied what they call a firebrand. It's right. like a piece of wood. He tied a piece of wood to their tails, lit it on fire, and let them run through out there. The corn and everything, the stacks of grain that the Philistines had, the Philistines had, and they burned up everything. They burned up all the grapevines, all the olives, all the corn. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. They wanted to kill Samson. They wanted him bad now. And his own family ended up delivering him to the Philistines, right? Judges 15 and 14 says. And when he came and when he came into Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands, and he found a new jawbone of a donkey right. and put forth his hand and took mm -hmm. it and slew a thousand men mm -hmm. therewith. Mm -hmm. Now see, um, Samson's strength was never attributed to his hair. It was always the Spirit of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, his cords were loose. Mm -hmm. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm -hmm. And those are free indeed who are trust, who, who are thus set free. Samson killed a thousand men. I'm here to tell you the victory was not in the weapon. The victory was not in his hair. The victory was not in his arm. But it was the Spirit of God which moved the weapon by the arm. We can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah. Now, Samson came back to town. He left and came back to town a, a, a period thereafter. But even, let me go back before, uh, and I left something very important out here. Um, Samson, when he was on his way back over to visit his wife after going to his parents' house, mm -hmm. he, um, he he stopped by that lion that he had killed. Mm -hmm. And it was time later, you know, after he had calmed down, he went back that way as he was going to visit his wife. Uh, well, he thought it was still his wife, but at any rate, what yeah. happened was he stopped at that lion he had killed and found that there had been a beehive, uh, honey, honey, bees yeah. mm -hmm. in a, and honey yeah. in a hive that had grown within that lion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Samson, he stopped there and he grabbed some of that honey and he started grubbing on that honey. Mm -hmm. And uh, to take it backwards, he took some of that honey home to his parents. But he didn't tell him where that honey came from. <laughs> he didn't tell him where that, you know, that, you know, come on back in those days, anything dead was unclean. Yeah. And he knew he was, tell you never, say that's a violation, <laughs> violation of the Bible. Yeah. That's a violation, of straight up violation of the Bible. Now God could have walked away at that time. But he didn't. God is a long-suffering God. He wants yes. us to be long-suffering. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that I, I had to go back and check myself on that one because that is significant. Yeah. Yeah. Very significant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now um, Samson went into the city and the word got out that he was going to uh, visit a harlot. He went to sleep with a tell your neighbor that's a violation of the Bible. That's a violation of the Bible, y'all. Now see they were gonna try to ambush him in the morning, but he left under the cover of night. 
And when he left, he took the gates of the city and the pillars. Wow, let me tell you something here. I will tell you, um, I went to try to find some comparison to uh, what he had done, his strength, and all the strength that he had. Now, back when we were growing up in East Palo Alto, Middle Park, there used to be a guy that came around that called himself Super Negro. <laughs> okay? This guy would come by and he would do things and he had a couple of cats with him. I think they were scamming us. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Some of the stuff he did, it was a lot of physics involved. Yeah. Come on now. Okay. Now this cat, he was strong. Yeah, sure. I seen him pick up a tree with a 12 inch round. He said, oh, I can't pick up no bigger tree because the city would get me. I seen him lift up the back of a, lift up the front of a Volkswagen, 1,700 pounds. Yeah, but he wouldn't let a car roll over him. But what happened was he would have a, a piece of plywood thick, and he would lay the plywood on top of himself. Like I say, it's physics. Now, as a car would come, a Volkswagen or whatever would come upon that plywood, the weight would spread out through the entire piece of plywood. Okay? We, he scammed us. <laughs> he would also do things like put a credit card on his eye or even a razor or a knife, but he didn't swipe. <laughs> <laughs> he scammed us. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, you know, I don't know what happened when he, he did crush up some light bulbs and, and he would eat the glass. But I don't know what happened yeah. when he got home. I don't know what, what he took some Pepto Bismol or what else, you know. But I don't know what happened on that. So I ain't gonna speak on that. But then I went. I went and uh, I had to uh, go and look at a couple strongman competitions on the internet, on YouTube, right? And these men, these strong men. Uh, I think the, the weight, uh, the, the heaviest weight, the record for a lift overhead is 468 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, these strong men, they're big and bucked, and they would have a, put a harness around themselves, and then they would tie a rope to that harness to a diesel truck or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they have another rope tied to something, and they would pull and move that truck. And, yeah. and the whole idea was to move the truck 100 feet, and whoever did it the fastest, they won the contest. Oh, now, Samson, uh, my reading tells me that the, the, uh, the gates of the city and the post weighed between five and 10 tons. Oh. Now, that's not even nothing compared <laughs> to what he did. He, he, he took the gates and tore them off, and, with the pillars on the side, five to ten tons, and he carried them on his back, forty miles uphill. Uphill. <laughs> now, anybody that has ever been on a treadmill, it's cool when you walk and just straight <laughs> off. But you hit that incline, but it gets hard. It gets tough. It gets rough. You're really breaking out of sweat now. This cat carried that thing from. From here to almost Oakland. <laughs> that's to the Oakland. That's 40 miles. You know, yeah. you know, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even getting out of the car. <laughs> that's a lot of weight. And then yeah. it was like 10 feet by 10 feet wide, and that wood was heavy with the concrete pillars on the side. Mm -hmm. Very heavy, five to 10 tons. Mm -hmm. Now, um, during the time right after the death of Moses, God told Joshua to continue leading the children of Israel into the lands promised to them. But see, they had to conquer those lands, Mother Carr. They had to go in and they had to fight to kill all the people, all those other ites in those lands. They had to go in and take, take them out. Now, um, the Israelites sent spies. They sent spies ahead of their attacks to gain the knowledge of uh, of what they might face once they get in there. They wanted to go and send spies in there to see what kind of weapons the uh, these people had and how many they were and 
and things of that nature, the Bible says that Joshua 2 and 1, and Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot named Rahab's house and lodged there. Now Rahab, she hid and worked with the Israelite spies. She allowed them to drop down out of her window in the cover of darkness. And then when the, the guards came the next morning to, to find out where these men were, she sent them in a different direction. Rahab helped our spies. Samson met and fell in love with another Philistine named Delilah. Now Delilah ended up being a spy for the Philistines. She took money for gathering of his secrets, of Samson's secrets. She was bought with a price like Judas Iscariot in the New Testament. The Bible says, uh, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lies, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest bound, be bound to afflict thee. Now, um, Samson told her a couple of lies. He, he told her about three lies about his strength. Mm -hmm. But then uh, Samson ended up telling her. He ended up telling her the truth. And Samson possessed extra, extraordinary physical strength. And the moral of his saga relates to the disastrous loss of his power to the violations of the Nazarite vow, mm -hmm. to which he was bound by his mother's promise to the angel. If Samson's hair were cut, then his final Nazarite vow would be violated and he would lose his strength. Mm -hmm. Samson finally tells Delilah that God supplies his power because of his consecration as a Nazarite. Mm -hmm. Now see, after he told her, she rocked him to sleep on his lap, on her lap, like a big old baby. Well, a big old baby. He went to sleep, and then she called the servant in to come and cut his hair. That was the final straw. Tell your neighbor, say that the vow is broken. He completely broke his uh, his agreement. All of those other sins, the eating of the honey, the uh, sleeping with harlots, and maybe even drinking. God took his power. Not only did they cut his hair, but they blinded him too. But while he was in prison, his hair grew back. They imprisoned Samson and made a mockery of the fact that he lost his strength. But oh, Samson cried out to God. How many of y'all know that we can cry out to God in our time of need? How many know that you know if we make a mistake and God will give us a second chance? How many of us know that He's given us more than a second chance? And he gave Samson a second chance with regards to his strength. God gave Jonah a second chance. God gave me a second. Yes. God has given all of us oh, yeah. multiple yes. chances yes. to do things right. Yes. I mean, we, we, we may not go out of our way to purposely sin, but sometimes we make mistakes. Yes. God is a, a forgiving God. He's a God of chances. He's a long-suffering God. Yes. Yes. We need to be thankful for that. Yes. 
We thank God for the grace and mercy. We thank God for the restoration that's in his blood. And we just want to be thankful and not and, and know that and, and just be thankful for it all. Can we all say amen? amen.